Welcome along to our third tutorial where we are learning to code using the language Python. In today's video, we are going to step it up a notch and we are going to be getting a little bit more fancy with our code by asking a user a question. So in this particular example, we're going to be asking the user what their name is. We're going to remember that name and say a message or display a message back to them that says hello to them using their name. Okay, so it's not too hard, it's only two lines of code, but there's a few new words that you need to learn, a few new concepts that you will need to learn. That might confuse you a little bit, but don't stress, we will be using these concepts over and over again over the next couple of weeks. And trust me, if it doesn't make sense now, by about week five or six, it will start to make sense, okay? So let's get started. And the first thing we wanna do in our code today is ask the user a question. We wanna ask them what their name is. So we wanna, Display a message on the screen like we've been doing in our previous couple of videos, but this time we want to get the user to type in a response to our question. Okay, so instead of using the print keyword that we've been using in previous tutorials, we're going to use a new keyword called input. Okay, it allows the user to input or type something in on the keyboard once the question has been asked. Okay, so the question we're asking today still comes inside of brackets and double quotation marks. And we're going to say, what is your name? And you can still close the quotation marks and the brackets at the end. So it looks pretty similar to what we've been doing. But if we save this now, I'll just call it um, for what is your name. And if we run this code, you'll see it looks exactly the same. We're displaying a message on the screen. But this time it allows us to type in a response. So I'll type in Tim and press enter. And that's the end of my program. Okay, if you ever see these three dashes here, it just means your program's finished running. Okay, so we've got a couple of issues we need to fix before we go any further. Okay, first of all is the space between the quotation mark and my name. I want to have a space there. So just before these quotation marks finish up, let's put a space in. Run that code again and you can see you've got a space. So when you type your name in, it looks a bit nicer. The other thing I'm going to change is this question mark. You can leave it there if you want, but it doesn't really look like it wants the user to type in something. So I'm going to put a colon there instead. And I'll save that and run it again. It says, what is your name? And by having a colon there, it kind of looks like it wants you to type something in. Okay. So we type in our name and we press enter. That's where our program stops. So the next thing we want to do, as I said before, we want the computer to remember what the user's name is. So whatever the user types in as their name here, we want to save that or store it somewhere so the computer can remember it and the computer can use it again a bit later on. So to help the computer remember what the user types in, we're going to create something called a variable. Okay, now variables, we're going to use lots over the coming weeks and they might not make sense to you today Okay, but as I said before, trust me, they will start to make sense in the coming weeks. Now, a variable is like a bucket that holds information. In this case, it's going to hold the information of the user's name. Okay, and it's going to remember that name, and then we're going to tip that bucket out later on when we talk back to the user telling them what their name is. Okay, so to create a variable, we go back to the, f well, the start of our code, basically, and Variables need a unique name, okay? In this case, I'm looking for somebody's name. So I'm just gonna call my variable name. And I'm gonna write name equals. And whatever the user types in as their name, it's gonna be stored inside this variable called name. All right, now to try and explain that a bit better, as I said before, imagine it's a bucket, okay? And this bucket, well, this variable is called name. We've asked the user, what is their name? I'm going to type in the word Tim. That's my name. Okay, and this information we're going to store inside of this bucket or this variable. Okay, so as soon as I press enter, over it goes and it sits inside that bucket, waiting to be used again later on in our program. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to write in a message back to the user that says hello to them. So we're going to print, like we've been doing in the previous tutorials, the message hello. Okay, that is a good start. So let's save that code and run it. 
It will say, what is your name? I'll say, Tim. As I press enter, it saves Tim into this variable name. Okay, but it doesn't do anything else. We haven't told it to do anything with that name yet. It simply prints the message hello and then stops. So what we're going to do is we're going to come inside of these brackets here in the hello message and we're going to put a plus sign and write name. Okay, and what that's going to do is it's going to say hello and whatever name is stored up here in this bucket is going to get tipped out and displayed on our screen just there. Okay, so I'm going to save that and we'll run that code again. It'll ask what my name is. I'll say Tim and it will come back saying hello Tim. Now you can see the obvious issue there is the space between the two words is not working properly. So the cheat's way around that is after the word hello, just put a space before you close off the quotation marks. Okay, so now our code should be working. Save it and run it again. Say, so what's your name? We'll say Tim. It says, hello Tim. Simple. If we want to run that again and try a different name, let's see if the computer remembers Bob. There you go. Hello Bob. Let's scrap the word Tim and instead it's using the word Bob. You can try it again with another name. Each time you type in a different name, okay, the computer remembers it and it will display it back to you just here. Okay, so I'm hoping that's starting to make a little bit of sense to you. We use the keyword input, okay, to ask a question. Remember, that's our new keyword that we're using in Python. Input asks the user a question. So we ask them what their name is. Whatever they type in gets stored away in this variable here called name. Remember, variables are like buckets that hold information. In this case, it's holding the information of the user's name. Okay. Then we're going to print a message on the screen that says hello, and then we tip our bucket out, or our variable is displayed just here after it. Okay, so it remembers the name, which is Tim, and then displays it down here. Okay, one last time, run the code, what's your name? Tim. Hello, Tim. And that's it. Okay, so make sure that is saved, and I will see you in the next tutorial.